1968 model KC Bedford. Um, my grandfather started it in the, in the 90s and we both started with it together and did bits and pieces until we um, I inherited it in some way and, and um, started working on it. The cancer never it goes through these things like you wouldn't believe and um, the change in the engine was a uh, strategic type thing we had to do to get the, the truck to be better than it was originally. Uh, Perkins, 6 six-cylinder diesel, uh, it's 120 horsepower, rotary pump on it um, and does very well. It sits on its 100 k's, no drama um, and, and very responsive. It's coupled with a uh, five-speed Leyland box, uh, single-speed uh, diff. Um, it's a remarkable vehicle for its time. We've done a lot of late model changes, so we can take it on long uh, finished truck trips, especially going to Alice and etc. Oh, well, originally the truck was green. Um, one of the history of, the, of those trucks, they had very pale different colours. It went to a manila uh, colour, which we've painted it today, with the black. It never, those trucks never had chrome, but all they were was painted, and that was it. This episode of Truck Stop TV was brought to you by Vintage Trucks and Commercials Magazine, Australia's own magazine dedicated to preserving our transport heritage. Featuring both restored and original trucks, as well as trucks still earning their keep today. Vintage Trucks and Commercials Magazine is packed with a wide range of articles, including restoration, technical topics and historical articles for both the enthusiast and restorer. Vintage Trucks and Commercials Magazine. Ask for it at your local news agency today or order online at www.vtcmagazine.com.au. Hi, um, I'm Bruce Brown, uh, born in 44, 71 years old, and I'm from Glenmore, which is around about 10 kilometres from Camden. I was coming down the road and I seen this thing parked on the side of the road, and I thought, geez, you don't see many of them around. So I went and seen the bloke was for sale. I took it for a test run, I thought, yes, why not? So I bought it, and he gave me the history on it. It um, was bought new from Parks, Davison was his name. Two brothers had it at Parks on a farm and when they got too old to farming they used to take an Alvis Chamberlain tractor around the back of it to tractor pulls. Then they advertised it in the land newspaper for sale. After uh, this uh, Roger Mills bought it from there and he grew feed at uh, Forbes and took it to a dry run he had at Cobar and that was used to take uh, hay and whatever from the feed to his dry run at Cobar. Then after Cobar uh, he sold those to uh, Oakdale which is not far from where I live and he said it sat in the yard in the shed for two years and only come out for rego um, and that's why he's selling it. And apparently I found out that it was still in the original Thies red, even though there was more red, well, more grey than there was red on it. But anyway, I fell in love with it and I cop a fair bit of flack from the club members about it being the, the only Japanese truck in the uh, club. But I grew to love it. And after that, um, I gave it a coat of paint, which made a big difference to it. And it's, it's getting a good reaction from a lot of people. Um, it runs quite good. It's only red lines at 92 kilometres an hour, but I only get along at 80, 85 in it, uh, which is quite comfortable. It's very economical to run. And so they ran from about 19, early 60s anyway, 61, 62, right through till the early 90s. So they had about a 30 year run where they never changed much. So the small changes as in the early ones had a bench seat the later ones after 1970 had a single driver's seat with a three-quarter seat. There was just small changes like that. Uh, I know this is a, an early one, but how early I don't know, I, I can't find out. It, it's an oil bath, this is all original under here. This is a centrifuge, which I believe that a lot of the European trucks are still using now. The oil is pumped up to it and that spins flat out. When you give it an oil change, 
all the carbon from the oil is stuck to the inside of it around there. So um, you just scrape that out with a knife and it's got an adjustable oil pressure. You can adjust your actual oil pressure, what you want to run at, down on the oil pump. And the oil filter itself, you haven't, it's not a paper one to replace. You, it's all metal fins and you just take the fins apart, wash them up in petrol and put them back in again. That's what you do for an oil change. Um, they're just a basically uh, a good old motor. What I can find out, that most of them came in through Darwin, even though that one come from Parks. Um, they were used a lot in the mining up in the north, the cattle farms and uh, the outback runs because they always knew they were going to get back with those. So they're a reliable truck from what I can find out. Apparently a lot of councils had them, farmers used to like them and they're a robust truck, uh, big springs and everything on them. It's a sort of truck that just keeps going and going and going and anybody that's had anything to do with them said they were a very reliable truck and very maintenance free, you know, like not a great deal went wrong with them. Once you had them running right, they were, they would keep going. Thank you for watching Truck Stop TV. Please remember to subscribe and see you at the next Truck Stop.